Hello and welcome home from your tour. My name is Todd Rogers. On behalf of my family and our entire team at Bob Rogers Travel, we'd like to thank you for traveling with us. I hope your tour brought new experiences, stronger relationships, and many memorable moments. Now sit back and enjoy reliving the memories.
Thanks again for traveling with Bob Rogers Travel. I hope you enjoyed reliving your memories, and we look forward to seeing you soon. You can download your video and photos on any smart device or computer. Easily share your trip experience on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Visit this website or download the app and use the login shown here. Finally, we have created a photo mosaics print from your photos. It is a 20 by 30 inch poster sized picture that you can order online. Find yourself and your friends. You will love it. Just log into the website shown here to order. We thank you for the opportunity to enhance your trip experience by creating this keepsake video to cherish for a lifetime.
Hello, we are so excited to see so many smiling faces at our POF concert this evening. We have a selection of familiar and challenging music that we are looking forward to sharing with you all. The band Green Day was formed in San Francisco, California in 1987. They are considered one of the most influential rock bands of all time, often credited with creating interest in mainstream punk rock. The band has sold more than 90 million records, making them one of the best-selling musical acts of all time. Even with 36 years under their belt, they are still touring and recording. Please enjoy this medley of American Idiot, Wake Me Up When September Ends, and Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, the best of Green Day, arranged by Douglas Wagner. Thank you. 
That's fine. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, John, we have a low battery. Can you grab another mic? And afterwards, I learned so much. This piece is like my baby, and the emotion I feel from it, and what I hope you feel from
Leonard Cohen wrote Hallelujah in 1984. He agonized over the piece with his own sketch notebook containing as many as 150 draft verses. The song was released and essentially forgotten. The song was reproduced in 1991 by John Cale and Jeff Buckley, but this still failed to achieve lasting success. It wasn't until it was included in the movie Shrek that the song received the broad fame it now has. In 2004, Hallelujah was ranked 259 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. Here is Hallelujah, arranged by Michael Brown.
No other company perfectly fits the phrase moving magic, quite like Disney. The Disney Brother Cartoon Company was founded in 1923, and over those th hundred years, Disney is responsible for some of the most beloved movie moments in history. Disney history is so long that s schoolers tend to divide it in category into eight different eras. We currently in the eighth era, often called the review era. Mel the melody we play for you is mostly from the Disney Revenants of 1989 to 1999. You will recognize music from Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, Alden, Turns On, Toy Story, and Monsters, Inc. Ladies and gentlemen, girl, girls and boys, we invite you to be our guests as we entertain you with some Disney movie magic. <laughs>
this thing on? All right. <laughs> um, hey, hello, everyone. This is um, a piece we worked very hard on. It's called um, Once Upon a December from the movie Anastasia from 1997. Some of you may have seen that movie when it came out. It's about the Russian princess Anastasia who, after her family got, you know, in the, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and this is a story that was made pure fiction. It's not anything true to what actually happened. It's mainly a speculation on a story that was mainly known around the world. Um, so this song is, was the lyrics were written by Lynn Ahins, and it was composed by Stefan Fla Flahy, and the singer of the song was Liz Callaway. She has an amazing voice, and she is still alive today, and she still does music today. This piece was, this flute quartet was arranged by Adrian Wagner. It's a very nice piece that has two flute leads, a flute bass, and then a flute in like the middle for like harmony. We were originally gonna call our flute group the Flea Patooties, but they didn't like it. <laughs> so Flutastic was what we settled on, but I hope you really enjoy our piece. We worked hard on it and enjoy the rest of the concert. All right, so while they're setting up, I'll introduce you to our next piece. Um, this song is called Sheltering Sky, written by John Mackey. Um, Mackey has written for the Brooklyn 
Philharmonic and the New York Youth Symphony Orchestras, as well as for the Dallas Theater Center and the, the New York Ballet, along with many others. In the past decade, he has written largely for concert bands. His songs are performed by amateur amateur musicians, as well as army bands and professional wind orchestras. Um, in 2014, he became the youngest composer to be inducted into the American Bandmasters Association. And um, he was also awarded the Vladimir and Rada uh, Lokand Award from the <clears throat> American Academy of Arts and Letters. This song, Shelter in, S Shelter in Sky, premiered on April 21st in 2012. The song has a folk song-like quality that makes for a warm, nostalgic feel. For this piece, Mackey took inspiration from a fellow composer, Percy Granger. Both composers write songs with folk song melodies. Mackey's themes were original to Shelter and Sky, but they do faintly echo other works such as D Danny Boy and Shenandoah. Mackey uses many indistinct lingering chords that make for a hazy scheme, a hazy scene, <laughs> Chromatic dissonance and brisker rhythms soar above the resonance. Each new phrase resolves the previous one, giving this piece a constant forward motion. As the song comes to a close, the dissonance resolves and the piece finishes with one last magnificent resonating chord.
Perfect, this thing's working. Hello everybody, thank you for coming out tonight and please give a warm welcome to the Cloquet High School Concert Band. Our first song of the night will be Bohemian Rhapsody, a rock opera song written by Freddie Mercury for Queen's fourth album, A Night at the Opera. He had written the song in 1975, claiming it was formed from three separate songs he had written in prior years. The, scene, the themes surrounding the song are considered nihilistic and fatalist. And while the song's real meaning has never been officially discussed by the band, it's believed to be about Freddie Mercury's personal issues at that point in his life. Some see it as a person in death row mis reminiscing about his life, or just a band babbling in a rhyme scheme. Regardless of its deeper meaning, it still became one of their best-selling singles and is considered among the band's, the band's best song and among the greatest rock songs ever. If you know the, f the lyrics, feel free to sing along. And please enjoy our performance of Beh Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen.
Hello, everyone. I am going to start off with a few words, because I know how excited everybody is to hear about another concert intro. Um, just first off, I'd like to thank my parents and my grandmother for showing up to every single one and suffering through good and bad. Um, I would thank my brother, because he's a really good brother, but he still owes me like $43, so, <laughs> so until then, he doesn't get anything. But most importantly, I'd like to thank Mr. Huseth. It's been a great three years. And when I first met Huseth, I was really scared because uh, I was a 10th grader, it was my first year in concert band, and I thought he was like 12. <laughs> and uh, he still looks, how, how old are you? 33. 33, you still look 12. <laughs> and uh, I had nothing but great memories with him. Just the best and you know he makes everyone want to come to class even when he's you know singing the song you know you know we see the proper kind of dressed up Youseth you don't get to see the one where he's dancing off in the corner and singing the songs so uh, but I also got some weird memories uh, most recent one was I was heading down to the Minneapolis and I was in the North Branch Quick Trip parking lot at 8 in the morning on a Saturday and none other than he pulls up right next to us so I had to roll down my window and yell at him a little bit. So, but yeah, thank you for being awesome, Yusuf. I just really appreciate it. So, yeah. it never, never change, never change. Keep being yourself. There's one thing I would change though. Can you give the guys like suit back that you stole? Because it, it does. It's too big. Please. It's the only thing I ask. Just get a new suit. All right, next with our agenda, I figured I should talk about the piece, that's what I came up here for. Um, our next piece is Arabian Dances, composed by Brian Balmegis. Brian Balmegis is a pretty uh, worldwide known conductor and piece writer of the 21st century. Um, he's been all over the world, he's worked with different groups and styles, and this has led to many of his pieces being performed all the way to elementary schools, up to the top symphony orchestras in the world. Uh, Brian Balmegis in 2013 got the opportunity to perform at the presidential inauguration and our piece tonight, uh, Arabian Dances, is based on plenty of Middle Eastern uh, music with sweeping flowing rhythm that trades places throughout the band. I'm really looking forward to the drum break in the center of the song. The hardest part was trying to get our percussion to yell hey and not to put the pressure on or anything, but you boys better perform back there. Um, but I really hope you enjoy this piece because I really hope I enjoy it. Thank you.
So before we go on to my recognition, I have this really nasty habit of forgetting solos, like three out of four times, and I always tell them, remind me, solos, and I forgot, the f I remembered the first two, but I forgot this one. So Rose and Bo, please stand for the fabulous solos in that last concert. Nice work. So, I, Morgan went and like set the bar really high for me. I don't know if I can follow that. Holy smokes. Um, now is the point of the concert where I get to recognize some really, really important people. One of the messages that I always like to drive home to this band and to everybody is that a team like this takes a village. Obviously, it, it takes some, somebody like me to kind of guide it and build the infrastructure around it. It takes some really uh, amazing uh, administrative and teacher support to make the structures behind it happen. It takes some parents who, you know, have to listen to all of that beautiful noise day in and day out to make this happen. But it also takes some really incredible student leadership. It would, this ensemble would not be the same without any of these students, but certainly without the very important seven students who I'm about to tell you about. Um, this is really the first class, this is my third year here at Cloquet, and this is kind of the first class where I really feel a personal relationship with, with all of these students. I can name a specific memory with each and every single one of them that makes me smile. From Morgan and his uh, SpongeBob Campfire Song song and ukulele class, to Zach and his incessant passion and willingness to ask the hard questions and amazing humor, and Liam and all of the alto saxophones just making me laugh every single day. These guys are amazing, and they, they make my day worth it all of the time. Um, so I like to recognize them, um, and here I went and forgot several of the things that I was supposed to give them to recognize. They're supposed to have flowers, and I went and, I went and fumbled that one. But, um, every year, I've started this tradition, I write them a personalized letter. This is I call a rainy day letter. Um, a teacher of mine did this for me in high school and it was very meaningful for me. The idea of this letter is for it actually not to be opened. The idea is for them to wait until a day that is just really, really terrible. That's really getting them down, things are, things are just really in the dumps and they need to pick me up. And they will open this letter and they will be reminded of all the things that I find to be absolutely incredible about them because they are absolutely incredible individuals. So, I'm gonna invite Lexis to come up. She is gonna read our names, and then these fine seven seniors are gonna come forward and get their rainy day letter from me. Please hold your applause till the very end, that'll make this go. Rowena Diver. Morgan Grove. Nick Lassard. Zach Line. Casey Marciniak. Liam Meager. And TJ Sabian.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to this, welcome to this, welcome to stage the incredible musicians who will be performing the songs from the greatest showman tonight. These talented artists have been rehearsing for weeks to bring you an unforgettable music experience. Get ready to be blown away by their incredible sounds, amazing musicianship, and infectious energy. Our band is made up made up of some of the most talented musicians in the business. On trumpet, trumpet, we have the amazing Nick, whose blistering solos will leave you breathless. On tenor sax, we have the incredible TJ, whose thunderous beats will get your heart racing. On trombone, we have the talented Casey, whose grooves will have you dancing in your seat. And on French horn, we have the outstanding Ian, whose soaring melodies will take you to another world. But that's not all. You have the incredible per percussion section that will blow you away. Myself, Jacob, Hunter, Taiju, Davin, and Rizal will make your hair stand up on end with our beats, and our notes will send shivers down your spine. I believe our soul soulful playing will bring tears to your eyes. Together, this incredible band will create a musical experience like no other. We hear all of your favorite songs from the film, including The Greatest Show, This Is Me, and From Now On, performed with passion and precision. You'll be singing along, dancing in your seat, and feeling the magic of the music. So let's give a warm welcome to the stars of tonight's show.
Um, so this concert obviously has a large part of uh, looking back and honoring those who um, have put in so much to make this band what it is, but also has a little bit of a sneak peek, and that's what makes it my favorite concert of the year. I'm going to invite our ninth graders up, and we're going to have a little bit of a sneak peek of what uh, next year's band is going to look like. There are a couple logistics, so give me one second.
Okay, so first I just want to comment that what you see in front of us is essentially next year's concert band. That's why I find this so exciting. And yes, it will be that big. Uh, I'm expecting about 90 students in our 9th through 12th grade, or in our 10th through 12th grade band, with another 30 in 9th grade band. So we are on some pretty incredible footing. This, that is awesome. Um, yeah, go ahead. Woo! Um, the piece you're going to play is a piece um, called In the Bottom Suite by Nathaniel Dett. Nathaniel Dett was an African-American composer from the 1890s. His grandparents were escaped slaves, and they escaped, took the Underground Railroad up to Little Falls, no, not Little Falls, Niagara Falls, Canada. Um, Nathaniel Dett started studying music at the age of 11 and became the first African-American graduate from uh, Oberlin Conservatory in Oberlin, in Ohio. Um, Nathaniel Dett, uh, he uh, connected a lot with a school of composition called the Nationalist School of Composition. And Nationalist composers took music from um, essentially folk tunes. Um, and they would arrange them for concert ensembles like this. You may not know any nationalist composers off the top of your head, such as Edward Elgar, who happens to be a very famous national, nationalist composer, but I'm sure you do know one of his pieces, and that is Pomp and Circumstance. That is one of the most famous pieces of nationalist music ever written. Nathaniel Dett heard music like this and said, hold on, there's all sorts of music from my grandparents and from this whole African-American diaspora that nobody is composing for concert ensembles. And he said, well, I have training. I can go ahead and do that, and that's pretty cool. So what you're going to hear is an arrangement of two pieces from a larger suite. The whole suite is written for piano and has four movements. This is just snippets from two of them. The first movement is called Night. You're going to hear these, these thick, smoky, um, nighttime sort of sounds, perfect fifth harmonies, very ethereal, very misty, pretty cool. The second one is called Juba Dance, um, and I had to research a little bit what is a Juba Dance. A Juba Dance came from uh, the West African Congo region of Africa, it was originally a percussion dance, um, but slave owners would not allow their slaves to use percussion instruments because they were afraid that they were communicating, so it turned into a body rhythm percussion sort of thing. Um, this dance, which you're going to hear, is a quarter eighth eighth swung rhythm. Bum bum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba dum. And interestingly enough, you have already heard that rhythm at least once in Disney. That already happened. Um, so this dance ended up um, gaining traction through South Carolina and into popular culture and became um, uh, foundational to early rock and roll and swing dancing and, and things like that. It's pretty incredible to trace its, trace its origins. So here is In the Bottom Suite by the combined 9th through 12th grade band written by Nathaniel Dett.
we are going to finish with giving. Well, there's a little bit of a story behind this. So every time we play pep band, we play low rider, and inevitably somebody comes up to me and says, Mr. Huseth, can I play the cowbell part? Because it's a solo cowbell part. And I thought, what better way to give our seniors one last time to shine than for have, to have them all play the solo cowbell part. So seniors, please stand up. Please tune your instruments. Make sure that they're in working order. And here is Low Rider featuring the senior class of 2023.